Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial. This time we're going to cover something really cool, which is magic methods. Now, magic methods are going to allow you to define how objects of the same object type can be compared, and they also will allow you to define what happens when mathematical operations are performed on your objects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a custom time class. So let's create our initiation function here. And it's going to be past an hour that we're going to set to zero, as well as a minute, and finally a second, of course. And then we're just going to come in and assign those values, just as we have in past tutorials. and do the same for minutes and also finally for second and there we go now we're gonna see our first magic method you've actually seen it before and this one is going to define how our output will show if someone tries to print our object and as you can see magic methods are surrounded by double underscores just like you see there and what we're going to do here is we're just going to return our time whenever this is called. So we'll go like this. And then we're going to define that we want to add leading zeros so that we make sure that we have a minimum of two digits for our minutes as well as our seconds. So how we're going to do that is go colon and O 2 D. And then for our seconds, we're going to do the same exact thing, colon. O2D. And the D is representing that this is an integer. And then we can call format and self and hour and get our minute as well. And then finally our seconds. And there we go. So that's how we can define custom output. Now magic methods are not going to only work for printing information out. We're also going to be able to use magic methods to define how operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, equals, greater than, less than, all of that. How all of those things are going to work out for us. And you can see examples of magic methods here for all of these different ways to interact. So what I'd like to do is come in and define exactly how our objects are going to interact if we try to add them together. So we'll go add, and there's going to be another time that is going to be passed in whenever we add this method to another, or add this object to another one. And I am actually going to allow you to define, or take a stab at how exactly we would be able to add two time objects together. And you can pause your video and give it a try, otherwise I'm going to provide the solution right now. So what I want to do here is I want to add my seconds first and if the sum is greater than or equal to 60 I want to increment my minute. So I'm going to say if self second plus other time second is greater than or equal to 60 then I want to increment my minute. So let's just add that up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take new time second and make it equal to the object we're working with second plus other time second minus 60 because we incremented the minute. So we want to go and figure that out. So we'll add that to seconds. And else if it isn't greater than or equal to 60, we're going to say new time second is equal to self second just plus the other time second, just like we would do normally. Then after we do all of that, I would like to check if my minutes is greater than 60. So I'm going to say if self minute plus other time minute minute 
is greater than or equal to 60. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. Then I'm going to say self hour plus or equal to 1. We'll increment the hour. And then we'll go new time. Minute is equal to, again, self minute plus other time minute minus 60 because we took that 60 minute away and incremented the hour. Otherwise, if it isn't greater than 60, well in that situation we can say new time minute is equal to self minute plus our other time minute. And then after that, I'm going to do the same thing for hour. So I'll just come in and I'll just, you know what, I might as well just copy this. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in, paste that inside of there, and maybe put a note inside of here that this is going to be representing our hour. So I'm going to say self hour plus other time hour. I'm going to say that this is going to be 24, however represent the 24 hours in the day, then if that indeed is true, I don't need to increment hour or anything like that. So let's get rid of this. There we go. And then we'll just say new time hour self hour. Change that to hour as well. Other time hour minus 24. Otherwise, we can just say new time hour is equal to self hour plus other time hour. And then after we have all of that all set, we can say return new time. All right, so we went and added those together, and I think that's going to be enough to really tell you how to work with the other magic methods, which you should go in for homework and try to figure out. I know you can do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new time here to test everything out. And we'll say 1 hour, 20 minutes, and 30 seconds. And we can go and test that our string function is working here just by running this after we come in and call our main function to execute. You can see 120, 30. Okay, let's test out some more things. Let's create another time. Time, and let's make this 24, 41, and 30. And then we can go and test what it looks like if we try to add these values together. And you can see it very naturally will work. And if we add them together, you get two hours, two minutes, and zero seconds. So pretty neat stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial and like I said for homework go and get the time objects to work for the other mathematical and other comparison operators. Should be a lot of fun because this is magic methods are really cool. I always really like them. Alright so hopefully you enjoyed that and like always please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise